Howdy and welcome back to Celebrating Vintage Model Kits. Today we've got our first Heller kit from France. Uh, kind of continuing the theme from our previous uh, model of a uh, French tank, we're going to go with a French aircraft. So this is a uh, 1961 uh, Heller Dassault Mirage 3. Uh, it scales out to 1 50th scale, although I don't think it says anywhere on the box what the scale is. So I guess it would be kind of a box scale. Uh, this is kit number L510. Uh, 1961 was the beginning of Heller. Uh, they, uh, the first, their very first kit was a uh, kit of the um, Caravelle airliner in 1 100th scale. And uh, this uh, Mirage was uh, their first real uh, combat aircraft that they produced along with, I think they would also did like a SPAD uh, in that first year as well. Um, so this is a unique kit. Uh, kind of a spectacular looking uh, box. Uh, plane looks like it's ready to jump out of the box right into your lap. So let's uh, let's get into this and see what we got. And so unfortunately, this box is a little bit damaged, um, but you can still get the gist of what it looks like. So you can see the uh, glossy uh, box art uh, goes around, wraps around the sides. Uh, you've got the artist's uh, uh, name on here. Unfortunately, I was not able to figure out who this artist is. So if anybody has information on who this artist is, it appears they did some of the early Heller ones. A uh, name that I did find for some Heller box art does not seem to match what this name looks like on here. Um, but if you have information about who did some of this early Revell, or I'm sorry, Heller box art, uh, definitely put that in the comments. So the information we got on here, it's a 64-piece uh, kit. Um, it uh, says in French that it's got uh, uh, working landing gear and a cockpit that opens as well. And there's the Heller logo. And uh, it's made from uh, official plans from uh, uh, the aircraft manufacturer, Dessel. So we've seen the sides. Let's look at the end. Fit this in here. Uh, just a repetition of that Mirage 3, the top box art, and on the other end, same thing. So not much else on the outside of the box, pretty simple. So let's look on the inside. I've got a fairly large. Right, set of instructions here. So it looks like this side of the instructions is written in English. And this side of the instructions are written in French. So we'll stick to the English side. So down in the bottom here, got some painting guides and uh, information about the aircraft. Here it does say that it's 150th scale and full parts call out and uh, some information about the uh, retracting landing gear. Wait till you see how they do this, guys. This is pretty, pretty amazing. So, pretty nice uh, drawings of the kit itself, calling out the numbers. Looks like there is a little bit of cockpit detail. Uh, not bad for a 1961 kit. Pretty good looking little pilot, maybe. Now here's the beginnings of the retracting landing gear. You've got uh, these springs that are in here. And uh, then you've also got... Uh, let you see what else you got going on in here. Uh, here's uh, the retraction system for the for the front door, the front wheel well. And you come down here to assembling the fuselage together. Some more of the springs. This is interesting with the nose cone. Uh, the uh, pitot tube is placed through the nose cone itself, which I thought was kind of different. 
There's the opening canopy. A little bit of a rendition of uh, the afterburner, maybe. Uh, you do have movable control surface on the tail. Kind of strange how it goes one, two, three, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it kind of bounces around on the instruction sheet. So here's six. Here's some more of how to make these uh, gears work. Pretty complex little system of levers and springs and strings and all kinds of stuff. And then you also have to use, as we've seen on a few other kits, a hot knife to be able to uh, melt some of these parts together. And then finally, this last assembly of the rest of the gear and some of the weapons load on the bottom. So a fairly complex kit. They do give you, you know, the visuals and your know, written instructions on what to do. So hopefully it wouldn't be too terribly bad. So let's set these aside. And we'll take a look at the decals. These decals are in fairly poor shape. They don't look very good to begin with. Pretty thin. Very soft, soft edges. Uh, this does not appear to represent any particular kind of aircraft, just generic Mirage 3 with the French roundels. Not very well made decals. There's instructions on the back, of course they're in French. Now let's take a look at the kit. So this kit here is still in its original sealed bag. So I'm going to be opening this for the very first time. And if you get close to get close, close to your screen, sniff deep. Mmm, 1961 Air just came out of this bag. So let's see what we got here. this aside for a second. I'm gonna dump these parts out and see what we got. So some really, really thick giant trees or sprues. It's uh, like an inspector's uh, tag. It was checked, make sure everything was there. So let's take a look at what we got here. So here's our fuselage halves. They were connected by this humongous piece of sprue here. You see with a lot of kits from this era, very large rivets, virtually no panel lines, no raised lines, no recessed lines. Panel lines are just being represented by these rivet lines. So even stuff like, you know, hatches, maybe fuel access. It's all just represented by rows of dots. Fit doesn't look too bad. Just hand holding it together. There's a little bit of flash there holding the tail apart, but it does seem to fit up pretty good. A little bit of sink marking. Ejector pins are on the back side, which is nice. Plastic feels a little brittle. That's your fuselage. Look at the top of your wings. Again, same thing. The only thing is uh, these rivets. Nothing else is indicating any panels or anything. 
I do like the fact that they are making this kind of as a almost one piece where the, the leading edge wraps around and so then it's connecting to the lower part in the middle. So that's kind of nice so you don't have to deal with you know trying to get a good fill on the front leading edges of these. That's kind of an ingenious idea. So you get those. Here's another sprue. Again, giant size sprues. I guess these are your elevons. It's the bottom of the aircraft. And then sprue with looks like a few accessory parts. <laughs> really cheesy bombs. I don't know what kind of bombs those are, but uh, when you do assemble them, you know, the uh, fins are in the wrong direction for the way bombs are typically carried on racks. Uh, then you do have uh, the shock uh, piece that goes inside the uh, air intake. That's there. Loose bomb. I think this is part of the stand. Uh, here's that nose cone that was hollow at the tip. Interesting they molded this in black, I guess, you know, kind of represent the black painted ray domes that you see. Then you do have another black sprue that covers some of the landing gear parts, probably some of the internal things. And uh, I think that was the afterburner section that we saw there. Pilot seat, some of the cockpit pieces I think are black here it looks like. We got that. And then we've got this other little bag of really fine parts. This one I'm not going to cut open. Uh, here's your pilot. It's not too bad. What you do see in here are rubber bands. These springs and string or, or uh, some kind of filament wire to connect all this stuff together. I can only imagine as a kid, trying to assemble this kit, trying to make this gear go up and down would have been a nightmare. The uh, landing gear looks somewhat detailed. The canopy is two piece, you know, as you, so you can make the opening canopy as it said on the box cover. So not too bad. And, Get a Ravel or Heller stand, pretty similar to the Ravel one, where it's got this two piece that would go around a ball. Yeah, that would then attach to the bottom. Yep, there it is. There's the ball piece right there, just like the uh, Ravel stand. But man, that's a that's a big piece. Well, I guess this is kind of a big kit. Kind of cheap looking though, not like the, the Ravel one where you got the nice carved globe. You do have the Heller name engraved on there. So that's it, that's what you get. Interesting kit. Not uh, not the most detailed, but uh, there are some parts that are kind of, kind of nice. Uh, so an interesting kit, especially the uh, mechanism for operating the landing gear that uh, Looks pretty complex. But. So the uh, Mirage originally started out as a 1952 call for, for designs from the, the French Air Force. They're seeing what was going on in, in Korea. Some of the other little hot spots that were kind of kicking up here and there. And uh, you know, aircraft were starting to get bigger and heavier. And so they wanted to get uh, a lightweight fighter. So the Dassault company came up with the, the first one called the Mirage. Mirage 1 uh, it was a kind of follow on to their Etendard uh, series, or I'm sorry, their Mystere series. Uh, they put a Delta wing on it and uh, came up with the look of this, uh, the first Mirage. Um, you know, it flew in 54. What Mach 1.6, and then uh, uh, the additional equipment that the French Air Force wanted to add to it uh, ended up uh, they wanted to get uh, they needed a bigger aircraft. They designed the Mirage 2, 
um, but they got rid of that design once they decided they were going to use the uh, the Snecma ATAR engine because it had an afterburning engine on it. So that was what developed the uh, the Mirage 3. First flight for that was uh, October of 1960. And the Mirage uh, 3 ended up being a, a very, very big sales success for uh, France. Um, some of the major uses were Argentina, Australia, South Africa, Pakistan, and of course the Israelis. Israelis love these mirages. So they uh, uh, they were sold all around the world. A lot of the countries that were not affiliated with either the West or the, 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 the Warsaw Pact stuff uh, would uh, pick up some of these uh, French because French aircraft because uh, they weren't uh, they weren't wanting to get themselves too far aligned with the United States or with the Soviets. So the French were kind of in the middle with that. The French would sell these to just about anybody. So this particular kit was uh, was only issued a, a couple of times. Um, they uh, did a, a 3C, uh, which is basically the identical kit with just uh, different markings on it. Uh, they did do a 3R, which is a reconnaissance version. They stuck a different nose on it. Uh, but the rest of uh, the aircraft uh, was identical, although the 3R, I believe, had a straight uh, fin without this kink. Uh, but the kit itself still has that kink, so it's not really a good representation of a 3R. Uh, 67 Buzzco uh, issued this. Uh, Buzzco was the main distributor for uh, Heller in the United States in 67. That was kind of the U.S.'s introduction uh, to Heller kits. And uh, then the final issue of this was in 73, and then... Heller revamped uh, uh, their their line and made a true 148 scale, uh, much more modern kit in the in the mid 70s, and I believe they've also popped another Mirage 3 out uh, more recently. Uh, there was uh, a one other Mirage 3 and 150th scale put out by Fujimi, uh, which ended up uh, getting kicked around for a number of years. I think Academy and somebody else had it. Yeah, it ended up getting reboxed as a 48 scale kit, even though it was still 150th. But that's a completely different kit from this one. Uh, some people think that there is an association between these two. In fact, scale mates kind of makes it look like there might be, but uh, this was exclusively a Heller uh, kit that was only really done by them. So that's uh, that's about it for today. Uh, as usual, at the end of the video here, I'll show you some boxings, some of the other boxings. No, no pictures of the actual aircraft uh, uh, that the markings are because this the markings don't show anything. So that's about it for today. Hope you enjoyed this, and uh, thanks for watching. If you built one of these early Heller kits, if you ever got this landing gear to work, uh, please uh, please mention that in the comment section. I'd like to hear if that actually worked and how well it worked. Well, thanks for watching, and have yourself a great day.